Hello. What's going on with this little uh, sweater you got going on here? It's not a sweater. It's Texas in the summer. This is a t-shirt. Uh, well, it's long sleeve it's or a, quarter sleeve. A I, t-shirt with sleeves. I don't know why you would even. It's thin. You look good though. You always look so I know. Pretty. I'm going to have huge pit stains by the end of this. You know, I never get pit, pit stains. That's why, <laughs> that's why I wear uh, tank tops. No, you, you don't. But you know what we did before we started filming? There was like white sticky schmutz all over the back of your chair. My chair? But, yes. I had to like rub off and I was like, I think that's Steve's deodorant. Well, I got to talk shit too. An embarrassing moment. Edit that. You're talking about my pit stains? <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm 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 uh, I'm excited about this podcast. I felt like that one week off just really made me feel like miss it. Yeah. You know, and, and I miss you. I'm missing here talking to you. We and then I you know we got to address the comments. People were very upset. I have not read any of the comments, but Steve loves to read the mean comments out loud when we have like friends over for dinner. Hey, you want to know what people said about Renee? I wasn't even going to bring that yeah. one up. There is one, there is one that, that they, they say not, well, not, it's uh, it's an observation and I don't want to talk about it. I, I was just talking about the fact that. What were the comments? Tell me. Catch well, me some up. people were like, oh, Steve. You know, jealousy doesn't look good on you. What were you jealous Why about? Why are you jealous of Tom Cruise? Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, no, look. Je- <laughs> jealous of Tom Cruise. No, just to be That's clear, funny. I really enjoyed the movie. Yes. I really did. I enjoyed the movie. It's a fun movie. It is a movie. However. Do people get really heated about oh yeah, some gun comments? Some people are like, well, you don't know. that you know." And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I enjoyed the movie. It is probably the best movie I have seen in a very long time. Yeah. So it brought people back to the theater. Yeah, yeah. And, and just to be clear, I, I I'm a huge fan of Tom Cruise. Yes. Huge like fan. you have dreams about Tom Cruise. I, I I think I think Tom Cruise is he a little um, uh, weird at times? Yes, but I think he's a really good dude. Yeah. And I also think that he really really cares about his art and it shows. Yeah. Or his um, job. He takes his profession very, very seriously. Very seriously. And he works very hard. And he treats the cast and crew very well. Um, he's very respectful. So I, there's a lot of things that, that I like about Tom Cruise. Uh-huh. I was merely saying that in my opinion, had he had flaws to overcome, that I would have been more... Um, I probably would have enjoyed the movie. Now more. I have to go back and read the comments. The fact that you felt the need no. to like reiterate. Well, your I need the. I have the need the for they must speed. Have gotten pretty intense. Um, but no, it, I, I just wanted to 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 make sure that people understand that that I did love the movie <laughs> and the movie was great. You know, and then I thought all the comments were going to be about pickles at the movie theater. There because, was a lot because this past weekend in Pittsburgh, people were coming up to me telling me, "No, we do not serve pickles at our movie theater." There, it, there was a lot of those comments that were like, "What <laughs> pickles at a?" Mo-? And some people were like, "That sounds disgusting." So there was a lot of of comments about um, the pickles at the movie theater. I, I just wanted to address the fact that. I hope people didn't think that I did not like the movie. Did you think that, Rick? Did you think that I was not liking the movie? Yeah. No, I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Beautifully shot. And as, as somebody that is in the business, as, as somebody who knows people like Rick, you look at some of those shots and you go, wow, how did they do that? Yeah. What it must have taken. A very expensive jib. Yes. To, oh, no. Now they're doing drones and they, they had to have cameras mounted on other jets. Like it was, yes. it was really an, an impressive um, movie. But to uh, get into our week. Yes. We, uh, we had a wonderful week in Pittsburgh. We traveled as a family. The whole family went. Grandma Dora went. Glamma Dora. Glamma, She's Glamma. Glamma Dora went with us. We took the, the, the Sprinter van. Little bit of a longer trip. I at, swore you told me it was 15 hours. Mm-hmm. And you're like, you don't ever trust me. Just trust me. I'm pretty sure we clocked in at like 22 and a half. I think, I think max for the family needs to be under 15 hours. No, I think my max is 12. I think little Miss Delilah and no, I no, might have I, a 12 hour max. I think 12 is, is doable. And when I say max, I mean, to, if we were going to push it, 15 
is the max. I'm saying let's agree to not go over a 12 hour trip. And if the 12 hour trip turns into 15 hours, cause we have longer pit stops along the way, that's okay. But like when you do Google maps and it says 12 hours, that is my max. No, I, I don't disagree. And, and, but, but I, I will say that that Garrett has turned out to be such an amazing oh, little are traveler. Are you kidding? Garrett yeah. was Garrett was amazing. I, I, Undisturbed tablet time. That kid was like cracked out and could have done twenty four more hours and been just fine. The best line from Garrett: We woke up in the morning to go to the do a pit stop, and Garrett goes, "Sweet day number two on the road." Like he was all, <laughs> all about it. I'm making him like write us for, you know, summer. We're still trying to do a little school so he doesn't lose everything he learned. And I'm having him write a sentence in the morning and like draw a picture about his sentence, you know. And so his sentence was, I am going on the longest road trip ever. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But, you know, I really wanted to talk about how lucky I feel to have the friends that I have. And, And for some reason, they are from Pittsburgh. Yeah. You know, these particular friends, you know, Dan, Pittsburgh Dan, our mortgage broker, um, and his girlfriend, Chewy, who Uh we call her Chewy. Alyssa. Alyssa. Here's here's what, you know, you learn so much from so many different people, Mm -hmm. you know, and you admire things about different people, you know. And and the funny part is, you know, Dan and I were, were, were laughing at the way that things used to be. You know, I would go to Pittsburgh. It wasn't nuts like it is now. Yeah. Um, I would stay over at Dan's house, you know, and, and we would have a, a lot of time together, me, Dan, right? Um, hanging out. We, we'd go have a, a drink afterwards, um, unbothered. Yeah. You know, and now things have gotten pretty crazy. Yeah. The green room's always a circus. You know, people want to be back there after the shows. It takes an hour to do meet and greet, you know, and it's just a different uh, a vibe. A it's different, a different hang. Different energy. And, and I, I got to say that, you know, Dan and Annalisa Chewy, I, and I told him, and, and I think he, he got a little embarrassed about it or whatever, but I told him, I said, man, I just want to thank you for your, your humility. I want to thank you for, for not making me feel bad that I didn't get to hang out with you as much as I would have liked. Yeah. You know, and, and he's always so accommodating. He had David J stay at his house. If I need a favor. He's helpful. You know, it's he's not just helpful. that he's accommodating. He like goes over and above. Oh my to gosh. Help. You know, we really wanted mom to catch a show and we knew that she could only catch the early show and then you were going to go, he, he was going to, we had to get mom back to, to Gigi and Rich's and then pick you up to bring you back. Mom's not comfortable in a, uh, Uber. Yeah. Cause that was the plan. We were like, just Uber. And she didn't want to do it. And, and Dan automatically was like, don't even, and he just, he doesn't, he never makes you feel like you're putting him out. Yeah. You know? And, and I, I just admire that trait about him, you know, and it makes me feel. And I told him at the, at the end of the weekend, I said, man, I, I just want to thank you for your humility. I want to thank you for always being helpful and, and, and not making me feel bad for not being able to spend as much time with you as I would have liked. Yeah. You know? um, because uh, we hang out with, with Rich and Gigi. When we're there. And, and that's the thing about, about Dan and, and Chewy is they will come to Texas and spend time with us in Texas. They were just with me in Buffalo, yeah. which was not as crazy uh, of a of a. That's the weekend. truth. Listen, the way you get the best quality Steve Trevino time is if you come and stay with us. And I know I make jokes about like us running a bed and breakfast and how there's people here all the time, but that's the truth. Like if you want chill kind of quality time, you come to our house and hang out with us. And and you know we'll, we end up. Just, you know, we did a, last time they were here, we did a big bonfire in the backyard. Yeah. We hung out, we had a cigar, we had a drink and we just get to relax and hang and, and, you know, we don't get to see Rich and, and Gigi as much as we get to see Dan. So, yeah. um, we took our time with them, Yeah. you know, staying with them. We've become friends with their kids, you know, and, Isn't and we crazy? just, 
Well, and, and, and Rich and Gigi have, have, they're very, very successful people. They own a huge company that they built themselves. Um, they, ha- I think he told me they're up to 175 employees, something crazy. Oh, like I thought that. it was way more than that. It might be more than that. Oh no, no, I thought it was way more than that. I know they, they literally are outgrowing their huge yeah. building that they're in. Yeah, yeah. They need another building because they acquired 75 more employees. No, yeah. but their, their generosity, and and when you watch them, commu- and, and so then. Saturday second show, they had 50 people at the show. They were all friends, family, employees, employees mm-hmm. slash family, right? Yeah. And, and they're just amazing people. And, and not to brag, or this isn't a... a um, Tell us how you're better than Tom Cruise. No, no. <laughs> I'm no, but I'm, I'm kidding. I just want to make sure people don't know that I'm not up here going, hey... Pat myself on the back. Look what I do. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah, because you read those comments too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there was any of those. Everybody says I'm great, but the um, one of the things that I do on Saturday night, we've talked about this. You've talked about is, this. Is I play a game. Yeah. Where, where I give monies away. Yeah. And oh my gosh, Rich, Rich, and Gigi were like, "Here's another hundred. Here's another hundred. Here's another hundred. Rich was giving out consolation prizes yeah. for people who didn't lose. What, what, he was like, no, oh, when they no, would lose. Out. That, for, yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. For people who lost. What, when they would lose, Rich yeah. would be like, come here, come here, come yeah. here. Here's 50 bucks. Here's, you know. So we ended up, the, the pot grew all the way up to $1,200. Is that what it finally got up to? $1,200. Not to mention all the tips that, that Gigi and Rich had been giving out that night. Yeah. And, you know, our waitress in the green room who we were running around like crazy. Yeah. You know, all the tips they give them, but we're playing the game Saturday night and everybody that would get eliminated, uh, Rich would be like, come over here, come over here and, and, and break them off a, a consolation prize. So yeah. I, I just, you know, you, you, you learn so much about being um, successful from them. Yes. You know, they, they do success so very well. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I, I mean... Gosh, I'm not even close yeah. to the success that they are. And, and you know, I'm, I hope to be. And I watch them yeah. and, and I just see how generous they are. And then one of the really cool things that, that I learned this weekend. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it, man, it's crazy how I really feel like this podcast. And I, I do believe in God. And I do believe that there are things that happen for a reason. Right? You know, we... we dragged rich into um helicopters for heroes yeah you know last year he was one of our our big donors he gave us twenty five thousand dollars um and it inspired them it inspired them because rich and his family do not have a 501c3 they do not have a charity they they are very charitable yes but they don't have a charity their own yeah well one of the rich's daughter, Elisa mm-hmm. and John, who have become also very good friends of ours, they have a special needs child. Um, he is autistic mm-hmm. and he is nonverbal. Um, and I bring that up because, you know, Rich and I were playing golf and, and Rich goes, Steve, can you imagine not ever hearing your kid tell you, I love you? And that was the line that was like, oh, like I... I couldn't imagine. Yeah. Like I really couldn't imagine. And, and we were just talking about on the podcast, how much we admire parents of special needs children. Who overcome those hardships. Yeah. Right. So Rich decides to surprise the family. Rich started to set up a, a foundation mm-hmm. for autism research. And he ha- he has them out on a, at a company outing, and they're all at the company outing. They they just to give an example of how crazy successful they are, they had rented out all of Wolfgang Puck's Cut restaurant. Yeah. It's called Cut. They rented out the entire restaurant. He stands up and he says, and, and by the way, Gigi didn't even know. Yeah. And and Rich told me he goes. I looked at Gigi and said, follow my lead. 
right? And I go, oh my God, how many times do I do that to you? Where you're like, what the <laughs> fuck is about to happen, right? Um, and, and, I, and he gets up, he stands up and he says, um, I'm about to start a foundation called Lex Backwards. Mm -hmm. XL. XL. XEL. XEL. XL. And he goes, I'm going to start it off. Here's $100,000 for this foundation. He put a Lisa in charge of it. Mm -hmm. And now they've, they've raised almost half a million dollars through his company yeah. for autism research. So I felt great because he said, you know, Steve, I, I see how passionate you are about veterans. I see, you know, how hard you fight every single day yeah. to try to raise money for these veterans. He goes, I had to. It's woven into everything you do. Yeah, and he goes, I had to ask myself, well, what's my cause? Yeah. Right? Well, he's the grandfather of a autistic child and decided that that is going to be his cause. Yeah. And it was just, it just made me happy, you know. And we've met Lex, and we met Lex, uh, uh, hung out with him Saturday. Yeah. Right? Um, and it's just, uh, and, and their parents, right? Their parents are such positive, hardworking people. And we... <laughs> I had so much fun getting into their love story uh -huh. and it was cracking me up because <laughs> everything was like us. Well, so this one time he blacked out. <laughs> well, this one time we were supposed to have a wonderful night out and he got drunk. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, that's us. That's, that's how we do it. <laughs> but it, it really turned out to be a great weekend and, and I, you know, I, I don't think I've ever been to Pittsburgh in the summer. I was just going to say, I'm in love with Pittsburgh in the summer. Like, it's nice enough that you can go and enjoy the swimming pool and get in the pool, but you're not, like, blistering, sweating hot, and, like, the kids could play in the backyard and the sprinkler. Like, Pittsburgh in the summer is really nice. Beautiful. I just, you know, I, I, and I'm finding, for me... The people that I'm connecting most with are that East Coast pocket. Yeah. Right? The, the Chicago's, the Pittsburgh's, the Phillies, the Boston's. Uh-huh. Right? Where, That's interesting, yeah. But, but I think it's because, like Texans, they have a lot of pride of where they're from. I was going to say, is it because you're a little brash? You're a little rough around yes. the edges? Yes. Like anywhere that you're, that people are, are brash and rough around the edges and hardworking, like Miami and, you know, yes. Phoenix, right? Where, where all these towns where, where you're finding, you know, these, I, I just, I have this connection with that, that working class. Yeah. You know, and I, and I said it once, I'll say it again. I am a below average man with an above average woman. Yeah. You know? And yeah. I, I agree. No, <laughs> no and, and I and I think that that little East Coast pocket of, of Pittsburgh and Philly and um, you know, um, um, Boston and uh -huh. you know it, it, it just resonates. There's definitely uh, I feel this very, culture of like girls with with good hardworking daddies that got spoiled. I, I always say there are some towns, and I, and I'm not going to um, name any names, but there are some towns that. You can walk on stage and shit on their city and they sit there and go, well, yeah, yeah, you know, we got to, oh, yeah, people shit on our city, you know. Yeah. Pittsburgh, do not go in there and shit on their city. Yeah. They will be very upset. Well, it's a beautiful you know, city. It's a great town. Great town. You, and you go through that tunnel and this beautiful. Like the rivers, you know, the water, the bridges, the skyline. It's just a really pretty city. Well, and we spent the day Sunday kind of doing more of a tourist thing where we were out to go see the city yeah. and we went to go see the incline. Yes. You know, you get up there and you look down on this, this beautiful town. Yeah. You know, and, and the, and you're the, riding a trolley car that literally looks like the trolley from Mr. Rogers neighborhood. Like that is what it is. Red trolley. It's totally the trolley. It is the trolley yeah. from Mr. Well, Cause that was, was he from Pittsburgh? Yes. Philly, the whole thing was from? filmed in, in, in Pittsburgh. You know, Mr. Rogers neighborhood is, Pittsburgh. Yeah. You know, and it's just such a, uh, a, a cool town. The shows were, were awesome, you know, and of course it's a party, right? Cause, yeah. cause richest people are there. Dan's there, you know, um, a casino's close by. Oh yeah. Then of course, a ball corner pockets there hanging out out of nowhere. Well, I mean, not out of nowhere, but he's, he's on a sales call because I don't know if I've talked about it, but 
what what a ball corner pocket does for a living is he sells the skin that goes uh, that packs meat for sausages. The sausage casing. The sausage casing is what he sells. So he was in Pittsburgh working, and then he's like, "Man, I got to be in Boston." I'm like, "What are the dates?" And he's like, uh, these are the dates. I'm like, holy shit. It is not when you're in yes. Boston too. Yes. A ball corner pocket's going to be in Boston when I am in Boston. Yeah. So it, we, I, 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 we're not driving to that one, by the way. Not driving to Boston. We had such a good time with the kids though. And Delilah. Yeah. De- and Delilah. She's going to be a lot of fun. She, you know what? She, she actually did really great she just there towards the end like kept doing her little chest like this like she just wanted out of the and, car I, and i get that right time. like you just want you, you know you're you're confined to the little chair you want yeah. out i get it you know so and, and you know we all we did it in one shot yes right we it wasn't like stop we stopped break it up yeah you know crashed out in a hotel showered relaxed i mean we yeah. like we're we're going through. sleep in the in the sprinter and let's go yeah right? which in a way i mean i think i think that was the right move you were like the kids are gonna sleep through the night so let's drive while they're sleeping and that it does that allows you to eat up a large chunk of time i don't think it's a bad move i just think no but that's but that's kind of the point right so that if it is if it is 12 hours then it's like three hours awake and yeah. then the rest of the hours by the time you wake up, we're right. getting to our destination. Yeah. And it's like, okay, get out of the car. And it's like time travel. Yes. Right? Because me and you used to do it. Well, you and I used to drive from LA back home to South Texas all the time. All and it was like a 24 hour drive, that one, right? It was about 20. 20? About 20 hours. Yeah. And when you halfway point was El Paso. But you and I had a whole system. Like you would start and you'd get to what, what like 5 a.m. I would drive. 5 a.m. I would, I would tell Renee, we, we would leave like at 9 and I would tell Renee, by 6 a.m., I will be in El Paso. I will drive from 9 to 6 a.m. You sleep yeah. from 9 to 6 a.m. Then I'm exhausted. I can now sleep. You drive from 6 a.m. To, to whenever you to wake noon, up again. And yeah. I'll wake up again and then finish it off. But but again. like. But that's different when there's no kids in the car. That's what I was going to say. Like... <laughs> It was just it you, is, me, and a dog that we had to stop to let pee. It is, it is, it really is hard. To, I, and people have told me before I had kids, it's like, I don't really remember life before kids. Yeah. I know there was a lot of time and we waited, of course, longer than most. Uh-huh. You insisted. Okay. Um, but. You're not harboring anything. But there's, it's like, God. The, the the freedom of don't worry about it yeah it's me and you two adults yeah you know not, and we you can know, hold it yeah <laughs> pee, in a, pee in a bottle let's go right <laughs> but now it's like and, and we you know we were talking about that with um with john and lisa it was like people uh, and, told and brenton, us and brenton yes, and brenton and katie people katie, told yeah. us before we had Delilah, they were like, two is just different. Like, I know it's one parent per child, but it's still different. Oh, my God. And it's hard. And and it is not one. uh, It is hard. And then and then people go, well, you know, if you want three, fuck it. Then then like at that point, yeah, yeah, it's just like it's easy. And I'm like, transition from one to two. I'm not willing to find out. Yeah. No, 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 no. Like I am. I mean, if you knew they were going to be like Garrett. Yeah, but Delilah's becoming um, very, very good. Yes. You know, and I am, I am. Minus s- the screaming. I think, but, but I talk to other people and they're like, girls are, that's, I guess that's kind of par that girls are typically louder or screamers. We can't ask Rick because he has all boys, but like people say girls tend to be like louder and screamers. My biggest issue just... with Delilah is her like, fuck you attitude, <laughs> right? Like if she's done eating and you hand her something, she'll just throw it. She's like, even in, the, even in the car seat too. Like you're like, here's your milk here. I put your milk eh. in your cup holder. And when she doesn't want it, she throws it out of the cup holder. She throws it out of the seat, chunks it across the car. And you're like, Hey, it can just sit there. It's okay. I mean, it's, it's, but she's, you know, I, I, I am completely floored as to how many words she knows. Yeah. 
Oh, she got really snotty yesterday and your mom was saying something about mocos. So yesterday evening she was walking around saying mocos, mocos. It was the cutest thing. It is crazy that <laughs> like the amount of words that, and, and her ability to now communicate. She's only one and a half. Yeah. And she'll come up to me and go, no, 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 no. And then she'll go like point at something yeah. or she'll grab your hand and go, come here, come, mm-hmm. come on, come on. Oh, you she, know. um, she now is saying, come sit. Like she'll tell you, she'll pat the chair and say, come sit. Yep. No, she's, <laughs> she's, she's becoming great. And, mm. and I think, you know, not to go back to it all, but man, you know, after the miscarriage, then going into COVID yeah, and then getting pregnant and it was not an easy pregnancy. Which, by the way, um, the miscarriage baby, that pregnancy was hard. hard to, yeah. Very difficult. Yeah. Then we lost that baby. Then we went into COVID. And then COVID was not easy on anybody. Yeah. Then you got pregnant. That was not an easy pregnancy again. Uh-huh. And then to have a colicky baby, like it was tough, man. Yeah. So I, I, I finally feel like. We're coming up for air. Yeah, we're coming out yeah. of the weeds a little bit. I feel like 18 months was the point where I felt like with Garrett that it was starting to get easier too. As they start to communicate and they start to understand, you can kind of guide um, them. How's the weight loss going? Oh, I've plateaued. I'm, I'm stuck too. Now I'm stuck too. I, think, I think I'm going to do, because uh, she said you could do the cleanse every quarter. Like, do it again. I think I'm going to do another cleanse. Just to, like, I feel like I mentally need the reset. I'll do it with you next week. Yeah? You want to? Yeah, I, okay. Well, you know, I, like, I, like I said, I plateaued. I'm also cheating a little more than, than I would like to um, to admit. Uh-huh. You know, um, I'm not gaining weight. I'm also not losing it. Um, yeah. But, but I will also say that, unfortunately, things have been hit or miss with, with my ability to work out with Chief. But it's hard on the road. I feel like every time I travel with you, I have to like reset. It's really hard for me to stick to it on the road. Not just like we had road trip food. It's just, it's hard. It's very hard. And, and, and for me, it's the hours. Yeah. It's the, it's the amount of hours that I am awake versus the hours that I'm asleep. Yeah. Right. I'm up for, you know, 18 hours and it's like, and it's not. In the you know, for example, Friday was it Friday? Friday it was. We got there Thursday. I ran to a show, did my show, came home, went to bed at probably one a.m. to wake up at six a.m. Yeah. To go do TV, to then do radio, to then get home. Rich wanted to play nine holes. They don't have healthy food in the casino. It's hard to find it. It is hard. We didn't go to the casino Thursday. <laughs> Um, and then to then play golf Friday, yeah. then to go do two shows Friday, then go do the casino yeah. and lose. Um, and then to wake up Saturday with the family ready to go again to then stay up late, two shows, then party till the alcohol three. probably doesn't help either. If we're being honest, that's what, you know, that's gotta be what get, I mean, I'm good all week. Yeah. And then the weekend comes. It's the alcohol too. And then I drink a bottle of crime. <laughs> no, we had a lot of really good wine this weekend because our Pittsburgh friends are are good wine drinkers. So we I, had lots of good wine this weekend. I love a good glass of wine. Yeah. I love a good glass of wine. But, you know, my Crown Royal, the fact that Crown Royal is not a... By, by the way, we haven't even done the sponsors. Oh, my goodness. Aztec Chevrolet. We love yes. you so much. Thank you so much. Aztec Chevrolet, always being there for us, always looking out for us. Um, please give them a shot. Aztec Chevrolet, Old Salt Coffee for every every single bag of coffee you buy with the code Trevino10. They will give me a dollar for Helicopters for Heroes. We're desperately trying to hit a million dollars. It's so easy. It's a bag of coffee. Yep. You drink coffee anyway. Oh, and it's good coffee. Dude. What? Pick cherries. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. The contest. Super exciting about the contest. I mean, look, I, I never know how these things are going to go. Yeah. And I'm always so nervous that, that anybody even gives a shit. That it's going to be a big old fat flop. Oh, my God. I'm always like exhausted, anxiety ridden. Yes. Like, 
You know, no, but people from the podcast have been great. Like we are getting comments about, I downloaded the app. I'm picking a cherry. Like, please keep picking the cherries. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everyone who participated in the contest. So it is now up to the algorithm uh-huh. or whatever they do to pick a winner. Yes. So next week we will be announcing our winner who went, who won the giveaway, the trip, a hotel room. Yes. Two plane tickets. Yep. Tickets to my show Mm-hmm. in Austin, Texas. So all accommodations are going to be taken care of. Super excited to see who's going to win. And now people have been hitting me up going, Steve, can I win? Steve, you know, is it going to be me? Uh-huh. I, I, I legally have, we, right. we legally cannot be a part of the picking process. There is a a random machine thingy, digital, There's whatever the fuck. Yeah, bot. There's a bot. That runs them all through and then randomly picks somebody. So, But thank you. Thank you to everyone who participated. That was cool. It was exciting. It was awesome. Yeah. There's so many people. And, and one guy was like, oh my God, Steve, this thing's going to be a huge success. We hope that, that you and your wife are a part of it yeah. in some way. And we, we are. We are a huge part of Pick Cherry's um, I also hope people are having fun, like actually picking cherries and sharing them. Look, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I am a, a part-time, every once in a while podcast listener. Uh-huh. I am not an avid podcast listener. I am more of a, you know, somebody will hit me up and go, dude, check this out. And I will. Or this was a great episode. Or or if I'm on the road driving for, you know, uh, from a gig or to a gig for 10 hours or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll check out. Um, some podcasts and usually they're, they're comedian interviews that I like to listen to. Yes. Right. Um, but with pick cherries, because I like crime and I like, I like to try to solve crimes Uh with pick cherries. It makes it easier. I I have become more of a podcast listener because a lot of times you don't know where to start. Yeah. Right. So now that it's all categorized, you go to a genre you like, and then you can hear tidbits of a few and decide which one you really want to invest your time So Pick Cherries has actually made me a more efficient podcast. Uh So thank you guys so much. We're picking out a winner um, next week. We're very, very excited about it. Um, And then we're going, I got Toledo, Ohio. Yes. Which I will be there while you're listening to this. I have my high school reunion. Oh, shit. Let's well, talk you're, about that. Well, you're in Ohio. I'm going to my high school reunion. Let's talk about it. Well, I don't know. I haven't been. Well, you're the one that's always like, don't tell people my age. I think you fucking just did. No, I didn't. I just... <laughs> I didn't say which one it was. I just said I'm going to my reunion. I didn't say how many years. Well, fucking people know it's not the five year. Well, no, it's not the five year, but that's okay. I, I just, I, I look, I loved, I loved going to my, I, my high school reunion and, and it, um, it was kind of trippy. Yeah. You know, I, I don't. Wait, wasn't your high school reunion planned around a Steve Trevino show? Yeah. When you're, when you're, when the graduate of, of your graduation class <laughs> is me, then you do it around me. <laughs> no, no, but it, it was re- so. My, the best thing about a high school reunion uh-huh. is was that it was re- revolved around a Steve Trevino no, show. <laughs> is is that that I had friends that I was close to in high school uh-huh. that I hung out with all the time, saw almost every day. Yes, right. Had okay. a relationship with, and then high school. You graduate high school, and then you don't ever see them again. Until the reunion. Yeah. Right? So that was what was cool for me was... Yeah, but you were like before Facebook and stuff like that. I think, doesn't that all kind of change how you feel about reunions? Because you can like still but, but even then, see there, what's happening in people's but lives. But there were some people where you're like, oh yeah, like I don't even see you on socials. Yeah. You know, there were people that came to the reunion that I'm like, I, dude, I haven't seen you. Yeah, I guess that's true. And I still think about like people I'm looking forward to seeing and it is different like seeing stuff on Facebook versus actually having a conversation and a hang. Well, yes. And, and, and those people that, like I said, you were close to, you hung out with, you drank a lot of beers together in high school, you know, and then all of a sudden you don't see them for whatever amount of time you see them again. You go, Oh my God, what are you doing? Yeah. I hope you're well. Right. And then to see them with their significant others 
as well. Yeah. You know, and, and R- Renee's so picky when it comes to other people. What do you mean? So, we, you know, we ended up like Renee was like, oh, she would tell me, OK, I like them. <laughs> what uh, are you okay. talking about? Okay, we can hang out with them. <laughs> like the, th- those, we'll, we'll drink with them. Listen, baby, there's only so much time. Um, but, but, you know, it, it was exciting. And, and um, you know, we lost a couple that passed away. Oh, a couple of classmates. A couple of classmates. And, and that, was we the, have two, yeah. that was the last time I saw them was at the reunion. So it was really cool um, to, to be able to have seen them. Yeah. You know, had we not had the reunion, I don't know if I would have seen that person before they passed. So it was really cool to see those people. Yeah. You know, to catch up to, to, cause you know, and, and that's another thing. I am still friends with a lot of high school people that I went to high school with, but it's always see them very quickly at a show, have a drink. The reunion was actually time to just be with them. Yeah. Right. It wasn't just passing by. It wasn't just a quick. It's just people you graduated with. Just people you graduated yeah. with. Yeah. 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 So, I and like by that. the way, you were. But I'm flying solo. I know. Like, I feel like class reunions are such a thing where you take your spouse. But they they all know your so- husband. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and what's weird for us is we went to the same high school. Yeah. So, one of my cousins is going to be there. And uh-huh. he was actually, he's helping plan it. Maybe he'll be, maybe I'll ask him if he wants to be my honorary date. So I'm not, well, he was so already the, he I was your prom bringing, king. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's you were, right. you were prom queen. He was prom uh-huh. king, yeah. which by the way, another thing that we do in the South that nobody else does. Oh really? The prom m- king and queen. The mum. Oh, the mum. I was like, you see prom king and queen in the movies all the time. The, the mum and garter. The mum is a southern It thing. sounded like a damn cow farm. <laughs> right? You big old bells. Everybody had bells a bell. Like, all the does. girls had a bell. Why do people put cowbells on them? I have no so idea. But, but that's the thing in the south is you get this huge mum with all these uh, streamers and banners yes. on it. And, and it'll then, have like the football player's last name and their number on it. Yeah, your, your date or whatever. Yeah, you know, for whatever. the homecoming. I don't know if there's so much a thing anymore. Like at, when I was in school, at one point they'd gotten ridiculous where it was like one flower was not enough. They oh, had to yeah, do like it was multiple like the whole chest. flowers yeah. in the shape of a heart. Like ridiculous. Yeah, I got, it would no, get No, no, crazy. but those things are like over a hundred bucks if you want to go buy one. Oh, it's yeah. stupid. And there's people in town that are like, I'm selling mums. Uh-huh. I'm going to make mums this mum season. Yep. Right. And I don't, I don't know. I, don't, I wonder where that came from. Look it up, Rich. I mean, Rick, did you? Did you guys didn't do that in Detroit, right? No. Do you see it here now? Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't, but I also don't go outside. So. <laughs> <laughs> Rick. Yeah, no. But the girl gets the the guy gets the girl a mom. And then she gets him a garter. And she gets him a garter. Yeah. And then you, you and then they wear it all day at school that day on Friday, the day of the football game. And then of course they pick a homecoming king and queen, and Renee was the queen, of course, <laughs> uh, uh, amongst all her other high school accolades. Uh, Renee was the queen, and then my cousin Rocky yeah. was the homecoming king. No, you know what? We have the tub of all the stuff my parents brought, and Rebecca um, was like, "We should open it up." She's like, it's the week of your high school reunion. We should go in there. And they were asking for photos for the uh, slideshow. I just got a message today. Did that you said, send some? I, well, I haven't sent any. They said they sent a message out today saying that they don't have enough pictures for the slideshow. And I was like, oh, should I bust open the box? You should do. I don't know what's in there. I don't know. Well, that's another thing that's 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 sad too, because you know, Miss Dora came this weekend and she brought me a tub. Uh-huh. And, and it's sad because it's like, here I want you to have all these things because I'm getting older. You know what I mean? Oh, no. I think my parents were like, we're moving. Get your shit out of our house. <laughs> which, uh, which, by the way, your parents are fucking hoarders. Like, I don't, dude, there is a fucking dryer and refrigerator that has been sitting in your dad's garage. No, they asked me this last time they were here. They were like, we have these trophies. What do you want us to do with them? And I was like, I don't need. Like, what am I, I need them in my with, closet. What do you do with trophies? Let me, I was set, like, I don't need let me set a room up with all my fucking trophies. <laughs> <laughs> but... Out of your class of, of high school friends, how many do you think you still keep in touch with? I mean, I know there's there's Bethany and yeah. Greg, who I love, and, yes. and Kendra. And, that I see when I go. Yeah. They're home, so I see them when we go back home. Not Kendra. Not, Ken, not Kendra, because she lives far away out in the boondocks. Um, 
But I still keep in touch with friends from high school on social media. A little bit? Yeah. On social media. And, and I feel like we sometimes we run into... When we're... I was going to say, I think it's more of that. Like, depending on when we're in a city, you know, they'll come out and we'll get to visit. I just remember, I don't know which friend it was, but she was like, just so you know, you're nothing to me. I'm here to see Renee. And I'm like, oh, awesome. Well, thank you. She's like, I don't give a shit who you are. Renee's, Renee's the star. I'm just letting you know that you're a piece of shit compared to Renee. I'm like, wow. Okay, well. I'm glad you were in my green room drinking all the free booze and free food and <laughs> hanging mouth, out. And now I'm, now I'm the piece of shit. Wow, great. No, they um, no one ever said that. But it's exciting to go back. And, and you know, Kane, PA, where, uh-huh. where um, Horton's from, and, and you finally got to meet yes. uh, Horton, mm-hmm. they do an alumni weekend. Yeah. And every year they have one weekend where all the alumni come home. Yeah. And I thought that was a, a really cool idea. And like for me, I had not gone back to a football game and I don't remember how long. And I guess what, five years ago we went? Yeah. Like we, for what, we were in town for something. I don't remember. Did I go with you? I don't remember this. You might have gone without me. I don't remember this. I, I forget when it was, but I ended up going and it was like, and, oh, and, and it's, I, I think I went because my nieces are, are cheerleaders. Cheerleaders, yeah. Right. And they have their little face on the fence, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and they're cheering. So I wanted to go see them. Alumni cheer. weekend sounds crazy. It's nuts, but it's kind of cool. I yeah. mean, like, you know, not everyone can make it. I, and I feel so lucky because I do tour the country. I, I run into to people from GP. They, gra- they come up to me and they go, I graduated in the 70s. Yeah. You know, I graduated with Raymond and Mary. You know, your, your parents uh-huh. are. You know, oh, I was 85 or I was 86 or, you know, we, we just literally at the airport. Oh, yeah. When we landed, um, someone came up to me and they were like, I went to high school, the same high school you did. I went to school with your sister. They just like recognized me because Beck and I look alike. I mean, they probably recognized me, but. Right. Um, but yes, right. they did. They did recognize you. But again, you know, I, I'm lucky enough that I have been able to keep in touch with a lot of GP people yeah. because of, of my ability to travel. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I, I always think it's so sweet too. Cause there's, there's friends that, that I have from high school uh-huh. that they won't even say hi till after the show. And I'm like, you dick. Like, I really wish you would have let me know that you were here. Yeah. That you were coming. And they're like, Oh, well we didn't want to bother you. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I love seeing people from from back home it's fun it's fun yeah so what do you think you're gonna get out of this weekend new boyfriend oh hush no no i'm just excited to get i'm excited to see people i haven't seen i i wish you were going with me i was gonna say i don't know how long i'll stick around flying solo but we'll see really (laughs) really i have a feeling you're gonna be wasted (laughs) just renee the homecoming queen just bossing people around. Shut your mouth. Running shit. No. With your valid Victorian tassel. No, actually, saying. no. You know what? The planning, the, I feel like the gentleman there we have, there is a girl in our class who like still lives back home and she's a party planner. Like that's her thing. And, um, a couple of the guys have really sort of taken the lead. Rocky being one of them. Rocky being one of them. Rocky and Steven. Cause they don't have my friend Steven. Cause they don't have Wives kids. Our kids. <laughs> Dude, Rocky's like forever single bachelor. Yeah. Like we'll hang out with Rocky and he'll be like, uh, hey, well, you guys can't stay out later? And I'm like, no, I can't, dude. I yeah. got kids. Like I got to go. But it's so funny because one of the other class officers is I think uh, Randy's like a either a vice principal or a principal at one of the schools. And she basically flat out said she was like, look, guys, I am like in the weeds until as far as planning. She's like, I'm in the weeds until July or June or whatever. So she's like, I will help when I can. Well, that that's another thing, too. Like when you... When you run into classmates that are now principals, teachers, uh-huh. police officers, right? People in charge. And I'm like, you're in charge? <laughs> Fucking you. <laughs> like, I know you very well. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, and you, you are now telling kids. I feel like that's usually the coaches, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's usually the coaches. You're like, wait a minute. Now you're telling kids they shouldn't drink on the weekends? <laughs> really? Because I was drunk with you every weekend. <laughs> like, that's yeah. insane. But it's exciting for you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fun. I'm excited for you too. And, and I, you know, we didn't have much to talk about on this podcast, but I'm really glad that we were able to do it. Yeah. 
you know, Pittsburgh was, was, it, it really is a special place for us and, and just a cool town. And that's because of all the great friends yes. that, that we have there. And it was it really just, is like friends who, they, they, when the phrase friends who become family, I feel like that's who we have in Pittsburgh is friends who have really become family. It feels like and, family. And it, it, well, you did bitch about it's time to go. What? But Saturday night, you're like, it's getting late. Rich wants to go. Well, it was late. It was like two in the morning. I was like, someone's got to wake up with it. You know what? Speaking of, you always do this thing where you're like, it's fine. I'll get up with the kids in the morning. I'll get up with the kids in the morning. And you say that, but you don't. I, you never said that I, that you wanted me to, I would have, I, I would have. the look on my face. It wasn't a giveaway. Um, it wasn't Re- a like, yes, please. Renee also says, I have no problem driving. I'll drive. Did yeah. you drive once? I was happy to drive. Did you drive once? See Let, or no? Let's be honest. No, I told did you. Did you drive? See or no? I would see or no? Happily, see or no? I, I did not. Okay. But I so, would happily so. sit in the front cab and have peace and quiet. Y'all, there's one of those partitions that goes up and down. And anytime Delilah would scream, the partition would go. <laughs> no, you leave it up because there's you don't. Like banging on it. Dad. You don't want the sun coming in. Which, by the oh, way. that's which, what it's about. The which, sun. by the way, they have controls back there. Then Renee would. <laughs> She'd bring it down. <laughs> the internet's not working. I'm like, what the? F- I'm driving. What do you want me to do? And it would go back up. <laughs> and then it would come back down. Um, um, where did you put the Fritos? <laughs> Garrett wants Fritos. I'm like, dude, I'm not back there. I'm fucking driving. You were just doing it to disturb my peace. Uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> um, so I would happily drive in the front cab and have peace and quiet. Um, Rick, are there any questions from you, sir? I do not watch comedy specials. All right. Now I got no questions for you. No, and, and, I, and I tell you why. Because I am so overly sensitive when it comes to... Um, I don't want to be influenced. I don't want to sound like somebody else. I definitely don't want to... You even try to avoid topics, which is hard because like we're all sort of living the same life. And if someone's touched on a topic, you kind of don't want to. I'm very hypersensitive to not, I don't want to steal somebody's material. I don't want to steal somebody's cadence. I don't want to, I don't want to steal somebody's idea. So I stay completely away from um, watching stand-up comedy, but I also... I'm a little jaded in the fact that I don't, I don't, I don't, I used to think, oh, I'm like them and I don't want to be like them. And I have realized that I am not like them. It is very hard to find a comedian who walks on stage and is, is proud of our country, who is proud to be a family man, who is proud, you know, uh, uh, who loves this country, who loves his wife, who talks about his wife, who talks about God. Yeah. Who, you know, I am, it, it, good luck. Good luck finding that comedian that is, is and, and, and I didn't do it on purpose, but it's really cool when people come up to me after a show and say, thank you for, you know, talking about family values. Yeah. Thank you for being on stage and talking about being a good husband or tr- at least trying to be a good husband. And, and I, I honestly, I'm trying to think. Do you think part of it is that it took you, a, it, it was a process to sort of find your lane? I know that phrase is like cheesy, but you found your lane and you just voice. They call it, it a voice. Yeah. Y- yeah. You know, uh, 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 it, I had to find myself. And, and I think that, you know, when I started, I thought, oh man. I want to be a comedian and I want to be everything comedian and I want to this be This is the, what comedians look like and man, sound like and Yeah, and I want my name on the on the comedy store wall and I want my picture up and and you know, I'm going to be a comedian and 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 I thought that that meant something different. Yeah. And it and and for a lot of people, their whole life, you know, they're all on each other's podcast all the time and it's this comedy community and and I always thought that I wanted to be a part of that Mm -hmm. and as I got older I realized that I don't right I you know on my Instagram on my Facebook on my TikTok I'm not afraid to share my family I'm not afraid to put pictures on my Instagram of me and my family yeah and I don't think you'll find that 
with many other comedians. Would you would you agree with that statement, Rick? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I, I think too that, like, to your point about going on uh, other people's podcasts, it, it gets repetitive when you follow someone and then they go to somewhere else and tell the same stories. It does get repetitive. Yeah, and 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 just to be clear, I don't I don't have anything against those guys. I'm I'm really happy for all of my friends' success. All the guys that I spent time with grinding it out at the at the comedy store and the laugh factory and the improv and and I, I I just realized that you know I mean there's so many comedians who are married mm-hmm. and they never talk about their wife there's so many comedians who have kids they never talk about their kids yeah you know and and I just I, I feel like I am in in almost a lane by myself you know where when I walk on stage it is family stories it is honest it is open it is me talking about my struggles as a husband as a father as a as a an american trying to make it in this world and try to raise better kids and yeah. a better life and uh, i don't think I, i'm trying to think like that's why i'm I kind mean, of you pausing. really are a storyteller <laughs> your bits are not set up punchline set up punchline yeah i, I you know i don't i don't sit down with a, a tablet and try to write Jokes. I, I I don't know Nate Bragazzi very well, but I think that he's kind of like me. I think. Yeah. Is that true, Rick? Uh, kinda, kinda. Um. I can see why you say that, but uh, I wouldn't put him in the same category, though. Yeah, and and I don't think there's many. I mean, maybe Jeff Foxworthy. Yeah. You know, may, maybe Larry the Cable Guy, but even Larry the Cable Guy writes jokes, right? Yeah. They're great jokes, and, and I love them, but maybe Ray Romano? Yeah. I've never seen Ray Romano stand up, but I know that he does talk about his life and his family and, yeah. and the things that he's going through. But man, I, you know, I can't think of somebody else. And I, I get really frustrated with this country sometimes because... There's comedians that all they do is shit on our country and they sell out theaters and arenas. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, are there that many people in this country that want to support somebody who just shits on our country? Yeah. I I, I get so frustrated with that. It blows my mind. It really blows my mind that this person walks on stage and spends 45 minutes talking about how bad our country is. And people line up in droves to sit there and watch it. Yeah. I don't get it. And I don't understand it. And I, I sit there and I go, man, I, I, don't, I don't understand this. Ooh, let's go watch this guy. Sh-. And, and sometimes they're not even from our country. Yeah. You're going to have somebody come from another country, come over here, shit on us, and you're going to line up to, and pay that person money? It's insane to me. You know, and I am pro America and pro God and pro family. Yeah. And I encourage anybody to to find somebody that that is that. You know, and I'm proud to be that. And I, I think that, like you said, it took a long time for me to to realize I'm okay with this. Take ownership of it. Yeah. I take ownership yeah, yeah. of it. I'm okay to be this. Right. People do respond to it. People do care. Mm-hmm. Right. People come to my shows four or five times and they come to me and they go, man, we, we just love it. You know? And, and those are the people that are going to keep me doing what I do. Yeah. You know, but we love you guys. And, and thank you for watching this, this podcast that my wife and I get to do and, and for supporting this yes. and us. And yeah, we love you guys so very much. Thank you. God bless America. God bless your family. We're out.